whomever is at home maybe wants to watch this too. Okay, so this is a, an animation. It's not the real deal. During the vaginal childbirth, the first stage of labor lasts about 12 to 19 hours and starts when your baby settles lower into your pelvis. In response, your cervix begins to efface or become thinner and dilate or widen. During this time, you may feel strong, regular contractions occurring every 5 to 20 minutes and lower back pain and cramping that doesn't go away. You may see a brownish or reddish mucus discharge, which could be the mucus plug at the opening of your cervix falling out. Your water may break, which can either be a large gush of fluid or a continuous trickle. If you experience any of these symptoms, contact your doctor or midwife to see if you should go to the hospital. At the beginning of stage two of labor, which usually lasts from 20 minutes to two hours, your cervix is fully dilated to 10 centimeters, and your baby's head has moved beyond the cervical opening into your birth canal. Your doctor or midwife will instruct you to push during your contractions and rest between them. In a normal delivery, your baby's head will rotate to face your back. During active labor, your uterus is divided into an active segment that contracts, pushing the baby downward, and a flexible passive segment that remains relaxed, stretching to provide more room for the baby to pass through. When the top of your baby's head appears, that's just an animation. Your doctor may make a small cut called an episiotomy to enlarge the vaginal opening. Then your doctor or midwife will give you instructions on how to push your baby out. As your baby's head passes through the birth canal, it molds into an elongated shape. An elongated head shape will resolve itself within a few days as the skull bones shift back into place. Some babies are cone heads when they're born. Baby's head exits the birth canal. His or her head and shoulders will rotate to help the shoulders pass through the birth canal. Your baby's shoulders are delivered one after the other in order to fit through your pelvis. Once the shoulders emerge, the rest of your baby slides out easily. They literally pull on the kid's head. In fact, um, if your baby is born, his oh. or her umbilical cord will be cut. In stage three of labor, which may last five to 30 minutes, mild contractions will help push the placenta out of the uterus. During this stage, you and your baby may begin bonding through skin to skin contact and breastfeeding. As I was saying, they literally grab the kid by the, the chin and the ears and just pull them out. And if you're really stuck, they'll use something called forceps. And forceps are metal hooks that go on the head like here and they tighten them and then they pull them out like that. It's like when you see the, the, the guys working on lumber yards pull pieces of wood out uh, of the water, it's essentially, it looks like that. And it, it leaves terrible marks and we've done it millions of times with very little negative results, so it's fairly safe. Um, I knew a teacher though, and she had this paralysis on her left hand side. So her, her arm, she didn't have full uh, motion and function of the left arm. And when she wasn't thinking about it, consciously thinking about it, it would just come like this. It would just always come back to it like this. And she had very limited use of it. She grew up that way and she never really, you know, I guess as a child, she didn't really worry about it. And then I guess when she went through adolescence, whatever. Um, but once she was an adult, 18, 19, 20, she asked her doctor what it was, uh, what, what, what it was a product of. And he says neurological damage, and it may have been from the forceps when she was a child. Yeah, pulling her out, but so. Not to scare you, but that's it. And, and babies that are vaginally born, you can sometimes tell. If you go visit your, your aunt or whatever uh, this, the day of, You'll look at it and it'll have a pointy head. It'll actually be a cone head. And you're like, oh, that's a lovely baby. You'll have to lie. Trust me, you do it all the time when you see babies. Uh, uh, you say, that's a lovely baby. Uh, but C-section babies have perfectly shaped heads, right? They come out, they take the giant barn doors, and they just walk out, and everything looks perfect, right? And you can also tell some babies that had, uh, uh, when the moms had pain-killing drugs, Right? Because sometimes they're, they're really groggy. So there'll be like a whole day or two of groggy baby. Because the baby's actually 
are, you know, been, been in, uh, taking in secondhand some of the drugs that the mom would have taken to pain kill. So they're really sleepy and groggy. And it's like, wow, your baby's really exciting. Um, anyways, lots of different things you can, you can see in a, in a newborn. Now you can, now the baby actually doesn't sit like that. The baby sits with the, so if you use a uh, lion here, uh, the baby usually carries around like this. And it's not until you're ready to, to, to pass it out does it, sh it, it flip around, right? Sometimes it's like this and that. But the baby needs to be uh, facing your butt like this actually, right? And it comes out and then it turns around and then you yank them out like that, like a horseshoe, like trying to get a horseshoe out of a, of a, out of a shape. Um, but the baby sometimes doesn't do that. Maybe it sits like this. They're called breech babies. And when they come out, their legs, their butts are too big. And then their legs get caught. And then if you do get the legs out, their arms get caught. Right? And then they're stuck. You just can't, you got to push them back in or something. You can't do it. So if you're a breech, sometimes the doctor will just like shove the hand in there and then manipulate from the outside and try to get the baby to turn. And, and try to get the baby turned. And now if the, it's a breech baby and they got like limbs all over the joints, like sometimes it's like that. So sometimes um, they can go in there and try to sort things out or it's just a, an ind indication that uh, w they're going to have a C-section, right? So, um, let's see. Let's see, breech. Oh, baby images. Yeah, so here's some like breech baby right there. So you complete breech, incomplete breech. That's going to be a future gymnast. That's a diver. See that? A total diving baby. And uh, this, is the, this is the orientation you want the baby in. So people can also tell because the baby turns and you can, you can actually see the, the mummy's, uh, the, the belly actually change shape. So it, it points out more at the top, right? And then it turns. So breech baby. There's other, I, I know, and, and some people have had babies where the umbilical cord is actually uh, wrapped around their neck, right? You may have heard of, uh, of those kind of scary situations and and uh, if <clears throat> if the baby loses blood during that time like uh, oxygenated blood during that time because it's like, strangulated or twisted or whatever it can have uh, profound uh, lifelong um, effects so you know if they recognize that often they'll just go into c-section right c-sections are super duper common now uh, the first sign of problems they'll just go to c-section and there's some discussion about whether that's a healthy thing to do all the time is C-sections. Because often if you have a, a child by C-section, your second, your third, your, your subsequent children are all C-sections, which aren't necessarily uh, mandatory, but most people would just do it after that as C-sections, right? And, and you saw the episiotomy where they cut the, um, the flesh, and they do that as a, as a prophylaxis, uh, as, as a preventative thing, because uh, if your doctor has been around birthing so much that they would look at it and say, uh, we do that or th there's tearing, there's actually tearing. And, and that could be way more difficult to repair. So the clean cuts are easier to repair. So uh, that just sounds not nice either, but. Um, fetal circulation. Your babies are in the, the mother's womb and they do not need to use their lungs. They're, they're in a bath of amniotic fluid. So where do they get their nutrients and oxygen? They get it from mom. How do they get rid of waste and stuff? Through their mom, right? They don't have to exhale it. They don't have to pee it or anything like that. It all goes through their blood. And then the blood gets filtered by the mom. And then uh, n n good things like nutrients and, and, and oxygen get uh, dumped into the blood. So their lungs aren't functional. They do test them though. They have videos of babies breathing in and out and they're filling their lungs with amniotic fluid and exhaling. It's, it's kind of a weird phenomenon, but it, they do it. But the, the, the first uh, use, uh, functional use of their lungs is when they're birthed. And then in the movies, they slap the baby's butt and it starts crying, right? Um, 
And that, that's, that's the first time they'll use your lungs for, for reels. Uh, before that, like I said, they will exchange this bad and good stuff with uh, the mother using something called the placenta. It's this pancake ball of flesh. And then uh, from it, it's attached to the mom's uh, uterine wall. And from it is this cord of blood. It's called the umbilical cord that plugs into the baby. And where does it plug into? Yeah, the good old belly button, right? If you're an innie and outie, I'm not sure if that's European or, or, or you know, Canadian models. I don't know. But anyways, uh, any outies. And um, that is where the blood would go to your mom, get oxygenated, get rid of blood, and return from your mom, and then go into your heart. Now, because it's oxygenated, guess what? It doesn't need to go to your lungs. It doesn't need to go to the right atrium. Remember the right atrium here? So it'll fill up the right vena, uh, uh, atrium, sorry, and then go to the right ventricle. My apologies, it won't go to the right ventricle because the right ventricle squeezes and the blood goes to the lungs. So it doesn't need to go to the right ventricle. So blood will get to the right atrium via the um, umbilical cord and via the superior and inferior vena cava. But babies have a hole in their heart. And that hole lets blood go from the right atrium straight over to the left atrium. And then blood goes down to the left ventricle. And you have to use the left ventricle because that's how blood gets pumped to the rest of the body. Right? And then it ends up going around and then to the uh, umbilical cord to pick up more oxygen, more nutrients. Or sometimes it will just come back to the vena cava, uh, uh, atrium via the vena cava. Now, because um, some of the blood is from the, uh, from the placenta and some of the blood is just coming back from the body, the baby's blood is actually mixed all the time. It's mixed oxygen rich and oxygen poor. And you know, with us, we hate for that to happen, right? We told you if you have mixing of bloods because valves aren't working, you may die. If your oxygen saturation falls down in the 90s and 80s, you don't have enough oxygen to, to oxygenate your blood, uh, your tissue, sorry, and you, you may die. But in babies, <clears throat> that's the norm. The norm is mixed blood, oxygen rich and oxygen poor. Okay. So the blood leaves the placenta via the umbilical vein going to the baby, the vein going to the baby, and it carries oxygen rich blood and uh, to the right atrium of the heart via the inferior and superior uh, vena cava, inferior vena cava, sorry. And then oxygen poor blood from the baby's tra uh, body travels via the superior vena cava. So let, I'll show you a picture here. So this is what the placenta looks like. I'll come back to this, hey, Rachel? Yeah, this is what the placenta looks like. It looks like this bloody pancake. That's the suction cup side that attaches to mom. That's the top side. See so all the blood vessels there? And then it's pushed up against mom's uh, uterus right there. And there is the umbilical cord that plugs into baby's belly right there. Okay? <clears throat> now, because uh, the... It doesn't need the, uh, the lungs, like I said. The blood will come from the umbilical vein up into here, and then from the baby's body into here. Fill up this chamber, and then there's that ho uh, the, the hole. And the, the hole, it makes sense, it's oval-shaped, so we call it the oval opening. Um, some people call it more traditionally the Foreman ovale. And then that blood will just skip over here. Now sometimes the blood does end up down into the right atrium, sorry, right ventricle, and it squeezes, but we don't need it to go to the heart. So um, the blood goes up and then goes straight into the aorta through, um, through a, a, a little bypass tube, right? <clears throat> so let me show you that. So blood entering the right atrium is diverted or shunted to the left atrium via the oval opening or the foramen ovale. Any blood that does enter the right ventricle is shunted into the aorta by the atrial duct, also known as the ductus arteriosus. So it's just a little tube. Instead of going to the lungs, it just jumps over to the aorta. Lungs are completely bypassed. This is what it looks like. So this is the umbilical vein. Look how nice and bright red that is. That because that's all full of oxygen from mom and nutrients from mom. It goes through the liver. The liver kind of works, kind of doesn't. The liver gets rid of toxins 
And this is why you don't want to drink alcohol or smoke while you're pregnant, if you can avoid it, right? Because this stuff will go through here, and then the liver is not functioning. So the baby gets that, the alcohol and the, and the drugs, because it can cross the blood barrier from the, the mom into the child. Now, later on, in the last trimester, the, the kidney, uh, sorry, the liver is pretty, is working. And some people justify their drinking in the last trimester by saying that. They go, oh, the liver in the child is functioning. It's pretty good. So uh, I've been told you can have, uh, you know, a glass of wine or a beer once in a while. And some people do that. Some people actually do it. I don't know, you know, I'm not that person, so I'm not going to judge. But I would, I would err on the side of caution and probably just hold off for another three months if I could, right? And I think, uh, you know, I, 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 I wasn't pregnant, but I abstained from drinking while my wife was pregnant, and it, I find it okay, manageable. Like, I, I don't drink very often anyways, but... Um, so it goes through here, and it goes into the right atrium, and see how bright red it is? And then the blue blood is the blood coming back from the rest of the baby's body that didn't go to the uh, placenta, and it's oxygen poor, so it's blue. And it mixes, and it turns into a less bright red. Now, some of it will go into the left atrium because of the uh, oval opening. So that, there's a hole in your heart. So every child has a hole in heart. And it'll just go here. And then it'll go down the left ventricle, uh, left atrium, sorry, to the left ventricle, and then pump through the aorta. Now, some of the blood will go, end up down here. And when this contracts, it's supposed to go to the lungs. But instead of going to the left and right lungs, it'll go through this little uh, duct here into the aorta. And when you're born, a little uh, a flap of tissue f closes over here and closes over here. And then over a couple days, uh, tissue grows and patches it up. Now, sometimes this doesn't close. And, and for a baby, it's fine to have mixed blood, like a, a, a fetus. But as a baby or a child or an adult to have mixed blood, that, that is not good. And um, if you have uh, this open, um, it can cause a lot of uh, difficulties for your child. When I was uh, in high school, um, I played basketball. And my basketball coach at the high school had a brand new baby daughter. And uh, happy, healthy, took her home. And then she wasn't doing so well. Right? The, the diagnosis for not doing well if you don't have a reason is it's called failure to thrive. So lots of people end up in hospital and the diagnosis is failure to thrive because they don't know what's going on, but they're not doing well. And this baby was having some issues uh, and came home and was doing fine and then just wasn't doing well, wasn't putting on weight, wasn't doing well. And they found out that she had a hole in her heart. The hole didn't close. And then, uh, so she was having mixed blood, and because of the low oxygen traveling to her different tissues and organs, wasn't, uh, you know, alert and happy. So they flew her down here for surgery to repair it, but by the time they diagnosed it and had everything uh, done, she, she had passed away. So the, the baby didn't make it. So um, that was from, this was a long time ago. So that is how we bypass the the... the the, the fetus's lungs, okay? Don't need it. So blood will travel through the fetus. Blood returns to placenta via the umbilical artery away from the baby. Umbilical vein brings blood to the baby. And at birth, the flap covers the oval opening forming an ovale and arterial uh, ductus arteriosus, or also it's called the arterial duct, is grown over with epithelial tissue, and all is good. This is a picture of how intimate the blood vessels in the placenta and the blood vessels in the mother are. So these are the capillary beds of the baby, and then these are the capillary beds wrapped around them from the mother. So no blood exchange happens. So no A-type blood goes into the B-type baby or B-type blood goes into A-type mom, because that would cause an, an Im immune uh, response, right? And then you could have some agglutination and some th things like that. So it never happens. Some small samples of it do cross, but not enough to cause a problem. And so carbon dioxide out, oxygen in, waste like uh, urea, uric acid out, and uh, water and nutrients in. Right? And that's how it works. And that's why it's super important to, 
to make sure that you're eating well and you're abstaining from you know those recreational things that might um, that might influence the child's development. That's it. So I just have one last video and then we're done. And that is, if I can find it, it's just how that placenta works for the baby. Is this it? Hello Fresh. Ooh, I've never tried it. She's got bangs. Oh no, this is the, no. History. Oh, I found it. History. Fetal circulation. Located in the mother's uterus or womb. As the development of life in utero. What the heck? Is it this one? Okay, it's okay. So let's just watch this and we're done. the passage of the placenta, located in the mother's uterus or womb, allows the passage of oxygen and nutrients from the mother's blood through a membrane to the baby's blood. From here, it flows through the umbilical vein into the baby. With the lungs collapsed, there is no need for the right side of the heart to send blood to the lungs. The blood is already oxygen rich thanks to the placenta. Instead, there are two shortcuts that allow the blood to bypass the lungs. The ductus arteriosus is a structure that detours blood normally routed to the lungs and lets it flow straight into the aorta and on to the rest of the body. The foramen ovale is actually a hole in the middle wall or septum of the heart which allows blood in the right side to flow through the wall into the left side and out to the rest of the body. In both cases, the lungs are bypassed. Finally, the ductus venosus, which is a continuation of the umbilical vein, serves as a shunt or bypass, which allows most of the blood returning from the placenta to be diverted from the immature liver of the fetus and emptied directly into the inferior vena cava. There you go. So some of it goes to placenta, not all. Some of it goes to your heart, so that's why it's mixing. And then it gets pumped around. Yeah, but all of it skips your, your, uh, your lungs. And that's it. We're done for the year. Hurrah. So we got week nine, and we have your final uh, test to write face-to-face. -face. You have your online nervous system to, uh, to complete. And if you have any questions about what you might be missing, and you can't uh, sort it out yourself, you can come check with me uh, uh, now. And um, I'll hand out the review for reproduction.